You're probably familiar with a tool called Zapier, the $5 billion BMF that integrates and automates work. One of the things that's allowed Zapier to become so big and so popular is they were started in 2011. They were one of the pioneers in the space. And as you might've guessed, since 2011, lots of different companies have joined and helped to integrate and automate work as well. So today we're gonna to talk about eight alternatives to Zapier in eight minutes. So for each new tool, we'll cover exactly what it is, why it's different from Zapier, and most importantly, why you should care, why it's actually useful. So with that out of the way, let's put eight minutes on the clock and talk about some alternatives. For our first Zapier competitor, let's talk about Make. So Make is one of Zapier's closest competitor. It was started in 2012 and basically lets you do a very similar thing where you're creating if this then that statements to build your automations. The reason that people turn to Make here instead of Zapier is that it offers a lot of flexibility. You can control everything here. As you can kind of notice, there's lots of tools and settings that go into each of these apps that let you have tons of flexibility when building your automations. The other nice benefit of Make is that it's actually cheaper than Zapier. So you can build similar automations with similar usage and pay, in some cases, half the price. Some of the drawbacks of Make is that they have fewer integrations than Zapier, but mostly the biggest thing is that it's just a harder to use UI. The downside of exposing all these settings is that it's just not as simple as Zapier. So if you're new to automations, I'd probably stick with Zapier. If you're an automation pro, Make is definitely one to try out. Let me ask a question. What would Zapier look like if it was built specifically for the enterprise? The answer is Workato. What you can quickly see as you start to use Workato is that Workato is meant for more of a power user, more of a developer. And specifically, they actually target the IT teams at large corporations. So you can see things like if conditions, repeat, repeat whiles, handling of errors, right? Zapier is actually adding some of these features today, but these are things that are core to Workato, as well as things like role-based access control, versioning, and again, the types of things that an IT team at a big company would really care about. The drawbacks to Workato is that in order to get all that enterprise functionality, you need to pay enterprise prices. You can't just sign up online. You need to book a demo. It starts at a much higher price range than where Zapier starts. By building a tool that's meant for enterprise, it's often just not as user-friendly, uh, not as simple and easy to use as Zapier. So who should use Workato? It's large enterprises that are still in need of automations. As you might have guessed, I work for WhaleSync. You can think of WhaleSync as two-way sync Zapier. Under the hood, it works a little bit differently. Instead of building your own logic with if this then that steps, WhaleSync is designed to handle two-way sync specifically. When you go to map your data together, you're basically just going to go ahead and tell WhaleSync what are the tables and what are the fields that you want it to sync. And what direction do you want that sync to go? Would you like it to be a one-way sync or a two-way sync? And from there on out, WhaleSync handles everything. The reason you would turn to WhaleSync is when you need to handle a true sync, right? If you wanna take what's in HubSpot and constantly have all that data be kept in sync with Notion or vice versa, it is way, way easier to use WhaleSync instead of Zapier. The drawback is that you can't build your own custom logic with your own steps. But if you are trying to build a real sync that actually needs to work for your business, Whale Sync is the tool for you. If you're trying to build automations, Zapier, Make, some of the other tools in this list are probably your better option. Excited to introduce you to another tool called Relay. What Relay is, is basically modern Zapier. Relay is the answer to what would Zapier look like if they designed it in 2021? Right, so it's modern, it's clean, it feels nice. As you can see here, Relay is built up of if this, then that statements, triggers and actions, where you can customize exactly what happens in each step, which should feel a lot like Zapier. Now they do have a couple things that are unique from Zapier. They have what's called a human in the loop step, where you can ask for permissions or approvals before a what they call playbook continues to run. Um, and they also have really nice features around AI where you can create custom prompts and summaries. On the drawback side, it is a tool that hasn't been around for 10 years. And so it just doesn't have the broad set of features that Zapier or a Make or a Workato has. But if you are not in need of those advanced features and you don't need thousands of integrations, Relay is an awesome new tool. I highly recommend you check out. Next, let's tackle N8N the open source Zapier competitor. So again, we're looking at a tool that is very similar to Zapier, but targeted at a slightly different persona. 
whereas Mercado is targeting enterprise IT teams, NNN targets developers. So this open source tool lets developers and someone that's a little bit more technical build automations with triggers and actions. The UI is a lot more developer focused. You see things like credentials and resources and operations, right? And again, for this persona, this makes a ton of sense. It is a great tool for that. The other benefit of NAN is that it's actually a bit cheaper than Zapier. Like Make, they don't charge the, uh, the Zapier premium for these automations. The drawback of all this, again, is that it's just more complicated to use if you're not a developer. It's not built to be super simple for anyone to pick up. It's meant for someone that has more of a technical background. So who should use N8N? Developers, developers, developers. Parabola. This is a really interesting one. It's a little bit different than the rest. So Parabola is an automation tool that lets you build if this then that statements to connect your data. The difference with Parabola is that unlike these other tools, which are all about the data that's outside of the app, Parabola lets you work with data inside of it. It lets you build reports and cards here. You can categorize that data. You can build transforms. So you can work with that data to split it, extract it, flip it, average it, whatever you really need. It's much more of a data workspace and a dashboard builder than it is just a automation tool. So what are the drawbacks? Parabola is again, a little bit harder to use. It has a little bit more of a learning curve than Zapier. And it's also much more expensive. So if you're just using it to do some simple automations, you probably want to turn to Zapier. But if you want a replacement for Zapier plus that spreadsheet, plus that dashboard builder, Parabola can kind of do it all here. And it's a really, really awesome tool. Next, let me introduce you to Bardeen. So Bardeen is like Zapier, but a Chrome extension. And while that sounds kind of like a small difference, it's actually pretty big because Bardeen works in your browser. So it can trigger off of things like when you click on a website. And when you do those things, you can have it as an example, take an action. So when I click on this website, create a new record in my Asana database. That is a pretty powerful difference. And basically the whole tool is built around this interaction flow, acting as a Chrome extension on top of your browser. Bardeen also has something called playbooks where they've basically pre-built a set of automations for things you might want to do, like adding Notion pages on notifying on Slack or copying jobs directly into Notion. Um, these are really nice and just make onboarding onto the app really simple. So who should use Bardeen? If you're looking to automate or scrape websites or really just improve the efficiency of your own personal work, I would definitely go and check it out. So let me introduce you to Integrately. What you've probably noticed in this video is that a lot of these Zapier competitors push to be more serious or more professional than Zapier. Integrately actually goes the other way. So they take Zapier, which is already fairly simple and easy to use, and try to make it more tailored towards people that are not technical at all. And their angle is basically to win a lot of SMBs who maybe have never used an integration tool ever before. It's meant to be friendly. It's meant to be easy to talk to live support. Um, and every single piece of this UI, again, is built to explain in a way that is non-technical. The person that should pay attention to Integrately is that person that's new to automations, that's just getting started. It's just a simple and easy way to automate a piece of your work. So that was eight Zapier competitors in eight minutes. I hope you enjoyed learning about all these cool new tools. And if you wanna check out WhaleSync, go to whalesync.com, try us out. We do two-way sync. We hope you like it.